Okay, so Junior Roberts here with realjuniorroberts.com and in this video we'll be looking at the CSEC physics past paper for January 2020. This is question 1. In subsequent videos I'll be posting the solutions for question 2 until the paper is completed. So ensure that you are subscribed and have the bell notification clicked so you will never miss any of these videos. So we're going to go right into this video, right? And here we have question one. And question one says, a sprinter of mass 50 kilogram was running a 100 meter race. Her velocity was measured at different intervals of a 11 second period. The results are recorded in table one. So here we have table one, right? And we are seeing where the velocity and the time were recorded for that 11 second journey all right so the first thing that this question wants us to do is to define the term velocity so we're going to write that the velocity of an object so we're going to say this is is defined as the displacement of an object per unit time. All right? So velocity is simply the rate of change of displacement of an object. All right? Or it's the distance move in a straight line per unit time. All right? So this is our definition for velocity. Now let's move on. Now, the question says, complete the following statement. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity per unit time. All right? So acceleration is the rate of change of velocity uh, per unit time. All right? So part B says, using the grid paper provided on page 5, plot a graph of velocity against time all right so here we have our graph here all right so the first thing that i'll be doing is to set a scale that i'll be using so for this uh let me look back at the table so again we're plotting velocity against time so therefore we're gonna have velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis so our y-axis needs to go from zero to 10 and our x-axis needs to go from 0 to 11 so I'm going to choose a suitable scale to facilitate uh, that information so again we're plotting velocity against time so time will be on our x-axis so I can label my x-axis here right and I'm going to have time in seconds right and again I need to go from 0 to 11 so so I'm going to choose a scale on my x-axis as one centimeter to one second so let me just indicate that this is zero here so one centimeter to one second so each centimeter is equal to one second so i'll go right here right so i can just now go ahead and fill in the values so i'll have one second Right, and I'm going to go one more to say 12. Then on my y-axis now, I will be choosing a scale of 2 cm to 1. So now that I have my axis labeled, I can now go ahead and fill in my values. So I'm going to start with when time is 0 and the velocity is 0. Right, so my first point will correspond to a position right here. Right. So when time is zero, velocity is also zero. Now, next point is when time is one second and the velocity is 1.2 seconds. So when time is one second, will be right here. And then when the velocity is 1.2 meters per second, will be right here, right? Because what we'll have is we'll have 1.1, I mean one right here, 1.1, 1 1.2, and so on, to reach up to 2. Now, 
Next, uh, next point is when time is 3 seconds and the velocity is, th is 3.75 meters per second. So at 3 seconds, velocity is 3.75, which is about right here. <coughs> now, when time is 7 seconds, the velocity is 8.75 meters per second. So 7 seconds is right here. So we're going to continue up to 3.75. to 8.75 right so we have one two three four five six seven right and that should be correspond to 8.75 so 8.7 is right here so 8.75 would be right here all right then when time is eight seconds the velocity is 10 meters per second so we have 7 right here, so 8 would be right here, and that's at 10 meters per second. Alright? Now, when time is 11 seconds, velocity is 10 meters per second. So, we have 8 right here, 9, 10, and this would be 11, and that corresponds to 10 meters per second. So, we're going to put our point right here, and a circle. Right, so now that we have our points plotted, we're just going to simply connect these points using straight lines. Okay, so now that we have the points plotted, we're just going to finish up by uh, finishing off the labels for our axes. Right, so by putting in the scale. So on the x axis, we use a scale of one centimeter is equal to one second. And on the y-axis, we use the scale of 2 cm is equal to 1 meters per second. <coughs> Alright, now the final thing that we're going to do is just put in a suitable title for our graph. So we're going to just say graph. Alright, now let's move on to see what else the question wants us to do. So the question says, determine the slope of the graph over the first seven seconds of the race. All right, so to find the gradient or the slope, which is another word for the slope, we will simply say that our slope m, our slope m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. All right, so we're going to draw a large triangle on our graph, right, to help us to determine what is y1, what is y2, and so on, right, so here we have our large triangle drawn in green, right, to help us to find the gradient of the line during the first seven seconds of the race, right, so in this case, our y2 value, right, would be, so y2 is equal to, this would be 7.5, meters per second right or y1 value would be equal to this is 0 0.5 meters per second right and our x2 would be six seconds so x2 is six seconds and our x1 value would be would be this is 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.4 seconds so we're going to use that information to help us to find the gradient right so again y2 is 7.5 and y1 is 0 0.5 so y2 is 7.5 meters per second and y1 is 0 0.5 meters per second right and again x2 is 6 seconds and x1 is 0 0.4 second so x2 is 6 seconds and x1 is 0 0.4 seconds All right so if we call on the services of our calculator first of all we know that 7.5 minus 0 0.5 is 7 meters per second and 6 seconds minus 0 0.4 seconds is 
0.6 seconds right so if we take our calculator right and we say 7 divided by 5.6 we get an answer of 1.25 meters per second so we'll get 1.25 meters per second squared right we're dividing meters per second by second so our unit will be meters per second squared all right now if we go further the question says state the physical quantity relating to the motion of the sprinter which the slope of the graph represent right and if you look back at our answer we saw where we got 1.25 meters per second squared which we know is the unit for acceleration right and again because we plotted a graph of velocity against time right the slope of a velocity time graph will always give us the acceleration so our answer to this question will be acceleration all right now question says now describe the sprinter's motion from eight seconds to ten seconds so if we look back at the graph right eight seconds is right here let me just double check all right so this is eight seconds all right so eight seconds is right here and 10 seconds would be right here so during this period the we see that we're getting a flat horizontal line which indicates to us that the sprinter is moving with a constant velocity and in this case she's moving with a constant velocity of 10 meters per second so we can write that between 8 to 10 seconds the sprinter is moving with a constant velocity of 10 meters per second All right now let's continue to see what else the question wants us to do All right so the question says we are to calculate the resultant force acting on the sprinter after seven seconds so let's look back at the diagram to see what happened to the sprinter during, uh, well, after seven seconds. So uh, seven seconds is, would be right here, right? So after seven seconds, we see where the sprinter uh, actually was accelerating to a maximum velocity of 10 meters per second all right so we're going to consider this period in which the sprinter was accelerating right because this acceleration is due to some force that causes this acceleration so we're going to consider uh, the formula which says that f is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration all right uh, we were told that the sprinter had a mass of 55 kilograms right however we do not know the acceleration of the sprinter doing well after the seven second when the sprinter was accelerating so to find this acceleration we're going to say acceleration a would be equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time taken all right so a time of one second was taken and the final velocity was 10 meters per second and the initial velocity was 8.75 all right so we know that acceleration is equal to v minus u over t right our final velocity was 10 meters per second our initial velocity was 8.75 meters per second and our time was one second right so therefore we will have 1.25 divided by one which as we know is 1.25 meters per second squared right so our acceleration then is 1.25 meters per second squared so when we take our calculator 
and we say 1.25 multiplied by 55, we get an answer of 68.75 newtons. Alright, now that would be the resultant force. Now, you might be asking yourself why I didn't take the time as being from here, well, 7 seconds, which is here, here to here. Now, if you realize, there was no acceleration during this period, right? So therefore, the resultant force on the athlete for this period would be zero, right? So we'll only get a resultant force during this period when the athlete is actually accelerating. Now, we can move on. And the question now says, using the graph drawn on page five, uh, determine how far from the finish line the sprinter would be. So, if we look back at our graph, again, we have a graph of velocity against time. Now, for us to find the displacement of the athlete, we can use the graph, right? And we can actually simplify the area under the graph. So, so if we take a look, closer look at the graph, we'll see that we actually form two shapes, one rectangle and a triangle, right? And we know that the area for a rectangle, I'm going to start with the rectangle first. So area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. All right, so we're going to take the length of this rectangle to be 10 meters per second and its width to be 3 meters per second. So we have 10 meters per second multiplied by 3 seconds. Right, so area of the rectangle then would be 30 meters. Right, now if we take the area of a triangle now, we know that the area of, area of a triangle, so area of a triangle is equal to half base times height. Right, so our base in this case is 8 seconds. So we'll say half of 8, half multiplied by 8, multiplied by the height would be 10 meters per second. So we'll have 10 here. All right? Now, half of 8 is 4. So 4 times 10 is 40 meters. All right? Now, the question wanted us to find out how far from the finish line the sprinter was. Now the question earlier said that the race was 100 meter so we can say that this is our starting and let us say this is our finish line right and the length of that is 100 meters. Now after 11 seconds the displacement let me just write that in so displacement after 11 seconds would be equal to the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle which is 70 meters. Now, since it's a 100 meter race, therefore means that the sprinter would be sprinter would be 30 meters from finish. Right? So, again, this was question one of the CSEC Physics January 2020 paper. Again, this was Junior Roberts with real juniorroberts.com. If there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on, please post it down below in comments and I'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you. Like this video if it was helpful and please subscribe so you'll never miss any of my new videos. Thank you for watching.